What do you wear to a summer cocktail party on Cape Cod? Well, it's not a black pantsuit. I can tell you that much. Hey there, I'm Jen Valenga, co-host of the Speak With Presence podcast, and this is bonus episode and story number eight of 347. My co-host JRT challenged me to tell 347 stories, 339 more to go, one story for every day that remains in 2023. Well, week two, and I've already adjusted the plan. I'm aiming for 347, but if I get half done, that's 173 deposits into my story bank, and that's not too shabby. Long before the days of business on top, party on the bottom, there was a dress code in the company handbook that no one ever reads. In the given circumstances of a situation, that's the dress code. Read the room, know the context. These very simple steps I forgot when it came to protocol for Cape Cod. Who am I? The director. Who are they? Donors to the theater. Who are they to me? Strangers, but they pay my paycheck. Who am I to them? Someone who's bringing creativity to their community and their theater. Whose territory is it? Theirs. What's the occasion? It's a new show. It's a welcome. Where are you going for it? In this case, a waterfront home. When are you there? June 2002. How are you getting there? I actually don't recall. Maybe someone picked me up. I just don't really remember. Why are you there? I was invited. Damn, that's not a good enough reason. Everyone was invited. It was a cocktail party. Why? Why were you invited? We should all know by now that it starts with why. Why? to connect to the community, not to conform, not to rebel, but to say thank you for the invite, to say I know where I've arrived and I'm here to join you. Well, I mean, I could have Googled what to wear. It was 2002 after all, and Google started in 1998, but I wasn't in the habit. But if I had Googled, it would have said Cape Cod, wear preppy summer fashion in classic nautical colors. Cape Cod casual typically denotes a style of dress, one which relies on, ah, yes, Lily Pulitzer. That's what all the women were wearing. Pinks, greens, yellows, blues, all light colors. No black pantsuits. I don't own Lily. I never have. I probably never will. But I learned my lesson at that cocktail party. And for the opening night, three weeks later, I went to a boutique shop down the street I bought an orange crepe dress with small red flowers and a choker around my neck made of orange glass beads. I think I had a pair of strappy sandals. Maybe they were even orange. The clothing was a small way to say, I know who you are. I've joined you. I appreciate the invite. Please invite me again. It's all about given circumstances. So what's happening in the workplace right now? Now with business on the top, party on the bottom, the context has changed. The whole world has changed. If we've all been at home and we've let our colleagues into our home where they never went before, saw our cats, our dogs, our kids hiding under our desks, closing doors so people didn't see our spouses walking by in their underwear, everything has changed. The context is completely different. So if your workplace has changed its mind about how people show up, hopefully they've communicated it. I've been in this zone of redefining executive presence lately, and that's one of the keys. What are you wearing that tells the story of who you are and where you rank in leadership? You can have your own personal style but no promises that you'll fit into the culture or the context where you've arrived. If you show up in a black pantsuit when everyone else is wearing Lily Pulitzer, you're sending the message that you're not aware. 
every workplace has a range of style that's acceptable. Are you willing to be the person that pushes the extremes or do you want to sit somewhere in the middle? Remember the whole dress for the job you want, not for the job you have that puts you at one extreme. But every industry is different. Now, I'm not suggesting that you go out and waste your money on all kinds of different clothing, but it is good for you to figure out the context, the given circumstances, and the why, who you are to them and who they are to you and what's expected of you. It's when we don't understand what's expected that we get into trouble. Go out there and read the room and know why you're there. Story number eight, Cape Cod Dress Code. I'll be back on Wednesday. Tomorrow, we're back with the Speak With Presence podcast, our interview with Colette Hemmings. She was an executive at Levi Strauss and then Nike Global Headquarters. She is really incredible and also has a delightful Scottish accent. I think you will enjoy. We'll be back tomorrow with a recording from our interview with Colette Hemmings. Thanks for listening. That would be 347 stories. I think I have lots of stories to share. On our podcast. Oh, gosh. Okay, yeah. I am double dog daring you. Okay, I take the challenge. (laughs) That's so cute. Challenge on.